approach of studying biology changed after 1953. Prior to 1950s, biologists were involved in studying plants and animals with more emphasis on taxonomy of the organism. With the discovery of the DNA, which is associated with the genetic characteristics of organism, the study of biology changed its emphasis at a molecular level. The three letters D and A are associated with an organism's unique characteristics. You may have heard this in association with human identification, genetic testing, crime solving, and paternity testing. DNA can be retrieved from simple saliva, blood, and even hair particles. Is the genetic material that is passed from parent to offspring for all life on earth. The advent of molecular genetics has enabled us to understand the history of life and the relationship between living things. It also helped us to understand the process of evolution. Thousands of species have been sequenced for their genome. This slide represents some historical information about the discovery of DNA. In early 1950s, Francis Crick and James Watson proposed a structure of DNA and were awarded a Nobel Prize. However, their work had contributions from the work of Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind produced X-ray diffraction images of DNA that were essential to understand the double helical nature of DNA. However, at the time of the award, she had passed away. Hence, her name and contribution sometimes do not get recognized. Another scientist, Shargaff, had proposed that DNA is composed of four kinds of molecules called as nucleotides. He further presented that two types of DNA molecules were always present in equal amounts and another two type were always present in equal. There are two types of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. The building blocks of DNA are nucleotides are composed of three parts, a 5-carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. There are four types of nitrogenous bases in DNA, adenine, Guanine are double ring purines, and cytosine and thiamine are single ring pyrimidines. The nucleotides are also named to the nitrogenous base it contains, hence, adenine, thiamine, guanine, and cytosine nucleotides. The phosphate group of one nucleotide covalently bonds with the sugar molecule of the next nucleotide, and so on, hence forming a long chain of nucleotides. The sugar phosphate group becomes the backbone for each strand of DNA, and the nucleotide base sticks out from this backbone. As you can see in the image here, DNA molecules look like a twisted ladder. The steps of the ladder are the nitrogenous bases sticking out from both backbones. The base pairing forming the steps is always between a purine and pyrimidine. A pairs with T, C pairs with G. This is the basis of Shargaff's rule, also called as the complementary base pairing. Adenine and thiamine are connected by two hydrogen bonds while guanine and cytosine are connected by three hydrogen bonds. The two strands are anti-parallel in nature. Notice the five prime end of each strand are opposite. The diameter of the helix always stays uniform. Another kind of nucleic acid is called as RNA. RNA is a polymer of nucleotides, also including a 5-carbon sugar, which is not a de deoxyribose. Notice the oxygen atom missing on carbon-2. A phosphate group and nitrogenous base.
However, instead of thymine, it has another nucleotide called uracil, U. RNA exists as a single chain. There are three kinds of RNA molecules, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. Now let's see how DNA is arranged in the cell. In prokaryotic DNA molecule is packaged in a circular chromosome and attached to the membrane on one side of the cell. The region that contains the folded chromosome is also called as a nucleoid. On the other hand, in eukaryotes, the chromosomes are contained within a well-defined nucleus. Eukaryotic chromosomes are also linear and packaged condensed within the nucleus. The image shown in this slide arranges the DNA double helix from among a molecular level to the duplicated chromosomal level. Notice the DNA double helix is wrapped around histones of protein that helps to coil the long strands. In a human cell, a DNA molecule would be about 2 meters. Hence, it needs to be folded around a ball of protein, which are the histones. Further condensation leads to the formation of chromatin, which is how chromosomes appear in non-dividing cells. We learned earlier, as cells get ready to divide, the chromatin condenses further into chromosomes. When a cell divides, it is important that each daughter cell receives an identical copy of the cell. This is accomplished by the process of DNA replication which starts during the S phase of the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. Recall earlier I mentioned that adenine pairs with thiamine and guanine with cytosine. This means that the two strands are complementary to each other, hence a strand of DNA with the nucleotide sequence of A, G, T, C, A, T, G, will have a complementary strand with the sequence of T, C, A, G, T, A, C. During DNA replication, the strands mix at one end, and just like a zipper, the parental strand dictates a formation of new strands. This process is considered to be semi-conservative replication as one old strand and one new strand goes into each daughter cell. Here we will look at DNA replication in more depth. The process is very complicated in eukaryotes and involves many enzymes and proteins. If we were to summarize the steps, it can then be understood at three main stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. The initiation stage starts by an enzyme called as helicase that unwinds and opens the DNA helix. The two strands are held together separately by another kind of protein molecules. Consider this as a nick in the long strand. Also consider as point of origination. Replication hence extends on both directions of the origin of replication. In eukaryotes, there are multiple origin of replication as the genome is very long and it helps to replicate simultaneously from several places in the genome. During elongation, an enzyme called DNA polymerase adds nucleotide to the three prime end of the template. Before the polymerase adds nucleotides, an RNA primer sequence is added to, at the start point. DNA polymerase keeps on adding nucleotide continuously on one strand, called as the leading strand. Notice DNA polymerase is synthesizing DNA in a five prime to three prime direction. Since the complementary strand had 5' prime open, it cannot right away add nucleotides. As enough of the DNA strand is separated, the DNA polymerase then adds DNA in a 5' prime to 3 direction. The, due, the new strands are made in segments and are called as the Okazaki segments. The strand that forms the Okazaki segment is also called as the lagging strand.
during termination or as synthesis completes, an enzyme removes the RNA primer with the DNA molecule, and all the gaps between the segments are connected by DNA ligase. Make sure to watch the DNA replication link. What are mutations? Mutations are mistakes that result during DNA replication and are not corrected. Nature has a way of repairing errors. However, errors that are not correct itself result in cancer. As you can see the statement, the dog ate the cat. If the D is not copied correctly, it makes a statement that makes no sense. There are proofreading DNA polymerase that corrects replication error, for example, detecting an incorrect added base, repairing a thymine dimer. Chemical and radiation often result in introducing two thiamine bonded together. They are either removed or repaired during correction processes. What are telomerase? These are repetitive sequences present at the end of the DNA strand. They do not code for a gene, however, they get shortened each time DNA replication takes place. For example, at the end of the chromosome, they may be repeated telomerase of 100 times. Each time replication takes place, the number of telomerase repeats is less by one. It is the nature's way of telling the cell that enough replication has taken place. If telomerase malfunctions, the cell will continuously keep on dividing and result in cancer. You can think that telomerase shortening is associated with aging of the cell. In this chart, we can see the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic replications. Prokaryotic cell has a single origin of replication. Eukaryotes have multiple. The rate of replication is also different between the two. Prokaryotes have a circular chromosome structure, while eukaryotes have a linear chromosome. And lastly, telomerase are only present in eukaryotic cells.